Welcome back to the Wednesday Night War right here on No Gimmicks Needed. And uh, first time us doing a Zoom call when it comes to the uh, Wednesday Night War. So, of course, we have here me, uh, Mr. Andy, and, of course, uh, now Deion Sands are prime time. What's going on, y'all? It's me, the P-R-I-M-E. Yes. Uh, however, doing the actual No Gimmicks University podcast, you guys will be hearing the audio clip of this review going into that. So, you know, but right now, this is going to be our new video form that we want to do for the Wednesday Night War. I'm very excited to do this, you know. Shout out to Primetime who told me I need to update, which I do agree with. So, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm trying to get the Zoom call. I, I, I got I to gotta buy that plan for my phone so I can get all the the stuff. But now we got NXT and AEW. A lot of things happening. Emma Moon is going to talk about where she's been at for NXT uh, also tonight. And also for AEW, we're celebrating 30 years of my second favorite wrestler of all time. Break the walls down, Chris Jericho. So why not get into this? Because we had a great Wednesday of wrestling here. So uh, we start off NXT, start off with NXT. If you open the segment, we get a recap what happened at TakeOver 31. And then, uh, you know, all the Ember Moon come back, Rich Holland and Finn Bob breaking the jaw. A lot of things happened at 31, but TakeOver was a good uh, show. Uh, Ciampa takes on, uh, to start the opening match, Ciampa uh, t- takes on uh, Kushida. And I was like, okay, so we open up the, we open up the thing with that. I, I, I thought it was a, a decent matchup, to be honest with you. Uh, Koshida was working on the arm a lot of times when it came to Ciampa. And this match went on longer than I thought it was going to go on for. I know this match this this is because the thing is, I was going, I was slipping back and forth between Cage and Hobbs because they were talking about AEW also. And I thought that match was more entertaining, in my personal opinion. Uh I was saying, because just seeing two big bulls go at stuff like that. But watching on this one, uh, Koshida was about to go for the win. Then Velveteen Dream comes out, you know, hits the tyro double black sandal, but he misses Koshida and hits Ciampa, which ends up in a, in, in, uh, end up in a DQ anyway. So uh, Koshida starts attacking Velveteen Dream and takes him out to the outside. So this rivalry is clearly not over between Koshida and the Velveteen Dream. Unfortunately. It, I, I know. So uh, what did you think of the opening matchup? It was cool. It was not expected, but I guess I think it's, it said like they were fighting backstage before the show, so then Will Regal just said, yeah, y'all can start off the show. Okay, I, I missed them fighting backstage. So that's probably, that's probably what it was. Yeah, no, Ember I think Moon, they fought backstage like on like Instagram or something. They just showed pictures of them fighting backstage, so then I guess backstage he said, yeah, okay, y'all gonna go and start off the show, and then that's when the show started. So, I don't think they ever showed it on TV why they were fighting. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. It's one of them, like, WWE exclusive type thing. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. Type that. Okay. Ember Moon is up next, and Ember Moon is out to talk about, you know, where she's been at for 14 months. I didn't know it was that long, but I know it was a Did year, you? but I know it was 14 months. You know the first thing she said? The first thing she said? Uh, being in isolation for 14 months? No, wow! I'm surprised y'all let me get mic time. Oh yeah, yes, I did. And uh, she said, "She's like, she said, well, man, I actually get time on the mic now." I'm like, "Ha, ah, dig! I, I, I'm feeling that, and I'm feeling that." So, uh, she's out there. She's been 14 months in uh, isolation. She said, "I know it sounds a little corny, though, but look, we're running by Ember's law, which means she's, she's not nobody will walk over her no more. She's gonna do what she wants to do." And Io Shirai's music hit. The NXT Women's Champion comes down, and they just kind of stare at each other. But then, this is my brutality, and then Maria Ripley comes out. You know, she got to do the whole. Uh-huh. And then do the Even whole when somebody's movie. in trouble, she got to do the whole entrance <laughs> before she come out. She does that, but then, uh, as she stares down Ember Moon, we get Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez come out and start attacking uh, Rhea Ripley, and then. Ember Moon goes and goes and helps them out, and then they fight. And then Will comes out and says, "Look, it looks like you want to fight tonight, so tonight it's going to be a tag team match, player." And then <laughs> we're going to get an impromptu tag team match: Ember Moon and Rhea Ripley taking on Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez in the main event. We're going to make sure it was the main event. So, uh, your uh, take on this: Ember Moon come back, get mic time. 
we we get to see her in the, in the main event if NXT. I mean, I, I like I said, Rhea got to grow. I mean, not Rhea. Ember got to grow on me again. I don't know. It's like but she I lost. Like- I was just say she lost it, and I don't. And she just got to grow up. It just got to come back to me. Okay. Because I don't know when they put her chasing for the title and stuff. It's like you forget. Yeah, she is amazing, but like she's been injured, and then what she was doing before she got injured, it's like you kind of forget that, and some people can't just snap back into it, or you can't just snap back into liking them when they haven't done anything just yet. Fair. Uh, Jake Maverick is coming, Sean coming into the building, talk about him and his match with uh, his his team up with Killian Day against the team of Ever-Rise. Why are they a thing? And then Io Shirai is talking about uh, how she didn't save Io and Ripley and Ember. She says that they're not my problem. Defending the title is my problem. And uh, so we get a uh, tag team match. Ever Rise taking on Drake Maverick and Killian Dame. Did not really care about this match. I- I'm not into the Beauty and the Beast storyline or the David and Goliath storyline or the people that aren't. T- there is certain times where it mixes with people are, are not tag teams or they're singles wrestlers and they put them together as a tag team. It worked for the bar. I'm not gonna lie. It worked for the Rocky Sock connection. But hey, you remember for- when uh when they when Drake Maverick had this serious storyline and he was like a serious character. Yeah and crying and he going right back to being Rockstar Spud again. Yep. And I'm like damn Leo couldn't get no job. But anyway uh Dane picks up Maverick for the power bomb, him onto Martel, and then causes the instant pinfall for the three. Afterwards, he tries to celebrate. He tries to do a little, little celebration, dancing there with him. And then, and, uh, Killian Day just kind of punches him and then puts him over the shoulder and just kind of like takes him back. I'm like, okay, whatever. Austin Theory is on is up next to go against Leon Ruff. First of all, now, Leon Ruff is a jobber, but, bruh, he's a fast little dude. Well, they actually officially signed him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's because the time when he was like bouncing on the ropes and they go under Austin Theory, I was like, wow, that's kind of impressive. But Austin Theory beats that's, him with that. His 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 situation is weird though, because I don't think he'll. I don't want to be mean, but I don't think he'll go far. Cause he is super small. Like, he's almost he smaller than Drake man. Maverick. Yeah, so he, he is. is and he he got is like small. no body weight. Yeah. So I don't but know how, how they how, how they gonna do that. That's how I thought Rick Swan was. And then he he, he he got some he got some bit on him also, and now I see him doing good things in Impact. And that's what you want to call it. You want to call it. <laughs> so, uh, so also there he says, see what happens when I get warmed up. But then uh, of course we get the return of Dexter Loomis, uh-huh. and we get a, we get an impromptu matchup. Austin Theory taking on Dexter Loomis. Dexter Loomis just stares down Austin Theory. Good match by to all. Uh, He's not doing anything stupid, like diving outside the ropes or anything like that. So I'm like, okay, cool. Keep Dexter Loomis uh, like that. Uh, but, you know, they, they do put on an entertaining matchup. Uh, Loomis uh, puts him in that, that little rock bomb thing and then starts choking him out. Also, they uh-huh. chokes him out. And then uh, he wins with a submission. Dexter Loomis wins. Uh and then be as uh he's trying to celebrate your boy go to the moon comes out uh camera grinds runs oh, he's still and, employed and then he uh hits him with the cave in and then he said uh, when I ask you a question you answer me you freak so that's Are you gonna ask nobody that's never talked on the show before a question <laughs> and expect him to answer you that's your boy so uh, your thoughts? Why is Cameron Grimes still employed? I don't know. I, but um, I yeah, no, nah, it, it was it was okay. I ain't had no problem with it. It wasn't like the best thing ever, but I ain't, I didn't really care if it happened. It happened. If it didn't, it didn't. Uh, this was one of those where I flipped the channel type of matches. So. <laughs> uh, next up, we got Red Charlie taking on Danny Birch. So this is basically to, this is to, to showcase Ridge Holland's power and stuff like that. And then uh, Ridge Holland hits him with the sidewalk slam, beats Danny Burch. So it's beating him down after the match, but then only Lorcan comes in to save him. And then Ridge Holland uh, 
leaves, and then Loki dives onto Rich Hound on the outside, and then we gotta get this X side again, uh-huh. and then somebody else is injured, and Rich Rich Hound got injured on a freak accident. I feel like everybody that gets a push that gets close to getting pu- push gets injured. Like Finn yeah. Balor, Cal O'Reilly, you know, just you know, Chompa, um, Killian Cross. So it's like, yeah, Dexter Loomis, Dexter Loomis, yeah. Yeah, let's see. That's just why he wouldn't be ricochet. Oh yeah, but he, I think uh, Ridge Holland, like I think his his left ankle and his left like knee, and then his right patella and right something else in his leg. So it's both legs, not just one. Ooh, that sucks. Yeah. Um, Giant Gano has a setup with a new TV. And it's in the USB with it. Shows how many times any hard will save Candice LeRae in the Women's Battle Royal. And then uh, Johnny was more like, there's something here. Let's talk about the Indy Hartwell before they go to commercial. And then, uh, you know, we got the wrestling school with uh, Timothy Thatcher that they did throw in there. And then we get close to that. Shazi Blackheart is uh, going up against Zia Lee. This match wasn't really much enough. The Shazi Blackheart oh, yeah. is, uh, is full, is got all the energy in the world. And next thing uh-huh. you know, she, she just basically beats Zia Lee. With the with with, with the uh, Centon, and uh, she wins. Obviously, she hosted Halloween. They, they said she's hosting. I'm like, I want to see her wrestle at Halloween Havoc. So, I guess she's gonna be the one that that's gonna be in scary outfits and cosplaying as other characters or whatever. Could be. It's a possibility. Afterwards, uh, Lisa's him in the corner, and Bo comes down to the ring and then gives her like a scroll with Chinese writing on it, and she reads it. This looks uh, weird, and it just walks. Back from so, the ring. So. Somebody had a joke and said those are her uh, deportation papers. Yo, I give, I heard the same joke. Yo, like I'm like that's ain't right, bro. I heard the same joke. Main event time: Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez taking on Rhea Ripley and Ember Moon. Ember Moon is back in here and doesn't look like she missed a step. However, you can tell she did gain a little bit in the. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. The area, but if you down 14 months, they ain't even working out. And then, of course, of that, you got the pandemic. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that stuff is going to happen. But still looks good. Still my little thickness. Still is moving. The only thing I wanted to make sure was, can she still hit that eclipse? That's what I wanted. It was going to make sure that she, you know, it's going to make sure that she try to hit it. At least try. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. She hit the eclipse on Dakota and yeah. You know. Well, okay. So first of all, that that, that, that clip she hit on Nicole Kyle look great. Cause see, usually she just goes out with the open arm. She went out, dove like this, like a swimmer first, then uh-huh. brought the arms back up like, ugh. Yeah. That was sick. Okay. That was sick. I I, I like that. So uh she she goes for uh the eclipse. Well, first of all, she goes out to go from Gonzalez blocks the eclipse, but rear Ripley grabs uh her. And then the fire was carry, and then it like it looked like she tried to Samoa and drop Gonzalez through the table, like the Nia Jax thing. Uh-huh. But it didn't work out that way. It's kind of like fall back and go over the announce table, and that's when Moo hits the uh the eclipse on Dakota Kai, and they win. So they size with each other, they shake hands, and then that's how NXT was. So uh, how's that NXT this week? Was it pretty decent? NXT was decent. It had a couple decent moments, a couple moments that I didn't really care about. Uh-huh. And then Cameron Grimes was on there, so why was he on the show? I don't know. I agree. Look, so now it's time for AEW Dynamite for October 7th, same date. It's 30 years of Chris Jericho, my favorite, second favorite wrestler of all time. 30 years of Chris Jericho, but we can know the show like from this last year. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, Yo, Jericho with the ECW, WCW, WWE, but we can only show the AEW stuff. Because like, all his yeah. promo pictures that they took for him, it's like all the pictures that he took like this year, like him with the long hair and him now. Yeah. Went into like different, like, I, I guess he tried to like redo the pictures. I redo uh-huh. like different poses, but it's like him now. So it's weird. It's, it's funny. Yeah. Uh, so we start off, we have Taz and Ricky Starks on commentary. What did JR say? JR said something. He called him the wrong Ricky Star. He said yeah, I something. think he called him like Ricky. Uh, I, I, he did call him the wrong name. I, I remember and, that. And I text y'all. I was just like, JR yeah. started off already. Up already. Yep. Already. As we kick things off, we have the FTW Championship match uh, defended for the first time on Dynamite. 
Uh, so why? So this title doesn't count. So why don't they just act like it don't count? Well, I mean, I guess they want to try to make it count now. No, but I'm I'm saying like if the title don't count, and then AEW say we don't acknowledge the title. Why don't they just do it like a thing where Brian Cage is like where Taz is like yeah this counts hold it up, even though it don't it's not like in the record books as a title win, but it's still like a Brian Cage type of thing. Like you know when Taz had it and he was defending it, it went it didn't matter if he won or not because he wasn't considered the champion of ECW. Gotcha. Yeah. If, fair enough. I, I agree with that. Why not? Um, Will Hobbs is taking on Brian Cage. Uh, that you know, for the FTW championship, two big guys got athletic going at it here. I really enjoyed this matchup. And then, uh, Jim Ross noted that Hobbs bench press is 475 pounds legit. Uh-huh. So, Taz is on there actually putting him over, saying that he has been watching Will Hobbs also. And, like I said, I just been watching Will Hobbs recently, and you know, they're talking about his story about he. How his brother got killed, and then so I, I I don't know the story of Will Hobbs. I'll try to look it up and see if I can find some shoot interviews or something like that. But I, you may know it better than I do. But uh, no, nah, I've only known him from being on Dark. Exactly. I don't even know where he was at before this, but I've been liking it. Um, I like how they. I do like how they pushing him though, and they give him like a not a like not an overly push, but they're like, okay, he's somebody that we can work on. Yeah, so they actually give him like a, a decent, like at least put him on the show a couple of times. Unlike um, the other dude who kind of like organically got over and they put him on TV once, uh, Pineapple Pete. Yeah, they put him on TV yeah, once and now he's like never. Yeah, so Will Hobbs, it's like he he's like a constant, like he's gonna be there for a while. Yeah, it's good. Uh, Cage is a German suplex, and then Will Hobbs gives him the the, the whole uh, what was it indie spirit, and then gives him a Cage a German suplex of his own, and then um. Has us the the, the, the the discus clothesline and goes for uh, the last one, the spine buster, but Cage kicks out and then goes for a frog splash. Cage moves from the frog splash and hits uh, him with, with the drill call, even though it was a close call where he kicked out the F5. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, thought that, I, I thought that was it, but he he, he, he get the drill claw and that was it. So Mike, uh, surprised Tassi's they doing... allowed the drill claw. I'm surprised that move is still allowed in wrestling. Uh, yeah, Cause that can get that, that can be messed up in so many different ways, but he still ain't got it better than Scott Steiner. I tell you that. Who? Uh, Brian Cage. Scott Steiner got it better, probably because Scott Steiner probably actually dropped you on your head. So maybe I shouldn't yeah, say that. He probably was a, you won't like it. <laughs> he probably something like that. Taz got on the microphone and talked about how I'm saying, look, he was impressive, and it it, it starts something in the ring with Cage. He said, but look, I'm gonna give you two options. Option A: be part of Team Taz. Option B, you say no, and then, you know, say so Starks and Cage going to beat the hell out of you. What's it going to be? But before Hobbs give his answer, uh, Darby Allen comes out, and then with a skateboard, and then uh, Taz said Darby would, would, would live to regret it. So I don't I don't know if I like that or not. I don't know if I like Brian Cage running from Darby Allen. Well, yeah, I, I don't like that neither, but I would say, but you know what? Yeah, as you say it, I don't. It don't sound right. Yeah, just because he got a skateboard, I'm pretty sure Brian can, can catch the skateboard and like break it over his knee. He, I mean, he, he tore a ladder, tore a championship, and having Lucha Underground. So yeah, it is possible. Yeah. Uh, so we we get a montage of celebrities from Jericho talking about we get slashed and his Miller, Ted Irvine, her, her, her Hiroshi Tanahashi. Yes, that is a big one. That's a big one for me. Because, yeah. like, that's like, say if, like, if the Dougley Boys and, and TNA was getting, like, a, a appreciation and, like, John Cena came up on the screen while he's yeah. still in WWE, that's, like, that's what this was. Because, like, he's, he's the John Cena. I can't, like, Okada and them, the new stars, like, the Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, but Tana Hodge mm-hmm. is, like, the John Cena of, of uh, New Japan. And I like it. I, you know, he did fight Jericho. Uh, so maybe they have another match. I don't know, but I, I like it. I, I, I like I like this. Whatever this was, a New Japan the AEW. I, I like it. Uh huh. Oh, I, I thought it was cool too. AEW Tag Team Champion uh, FTR going up against uh, TH2, which is mm-hmm. Angelico and Jack. Evans. Evans. Yep. So uh, Young Bucks are watching backstage. 
Good matchup by these two. Wait, uh, you can't just you can't just gloss over that. Did you see how they were watching backstage? Like this? Yeah, he was like he was like, <laughs> and then his kid kept staring. I'm like, this. like they <laughs> were super, they were super kick ready. They was like super kick ready, which I, I like the thing at the end. But uh, there was a point in where Jack Evans hurts his ankle. I obviously if he, if he, he was selling or not, but uh. You know, there was um. I thought he was selling because I didn't hear no. It, it was no injury report or anything. Yeah, we did a good job selling. Uh, there was an assistant 450. You know, say that they, they, they kicked out of. Uh, a lot of you know how far I, I I love him Helico ever since he flew off the office in Lucha Underground okay. onto the room. Okay. There was just yeah. some impressive shit because if you take one inch jump the wrong way, you fall right to the floor. And yeah, it's and that's a long ways too. Exactly, a long way to go. So, <clears throat> uh, we go. Uh, Dex, uh, Dax, oh, I'm still trying to learn their AEW names. Uh, Suplex Evans, and they catch will follow with a splash. I don't know how I feel about the be, being that one of the taxi finishers. I like the Shadow Machine personally. Now, if it was like a brain buster in a splash, I would love it. Mm-hmm. And they used to do that, but I guess they. They don't. They just do the suplex now, but they got like three finishes. So I mean, I don't know why they don't do the shattering machine as much. I don't know. I, 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 think, they, I think they try to save that one for kind of like how Keith Lee saves the Big Bang catastrophe. Okay. Okay. It, it, probably, it probably could be like that. So your boys, the best friends, come out and they walk in. And he says, you know, because uh, they, they they had a, a clip of of the elbows had a clip of. Uh, FTR up to the screen as wieners. And I'm like, slow down, y'all. Y'all get into WWE territory with these jokes. I think that's what it was a shot at. Oh, that's oh, okay. So you know when they when they um was about to leave, they they was gonna put them in like these clown outfits or something. Uh Uh-huh. So they took that picture and they just basically put a a hot dog over it, basically. But it's like the same picture of the of the the picture that WWE had of them in uh-huh. the clown outfits or whatever they was. Oh wow! Okay, I didn't pick. I didn't pick up with that at first. Okay, and then he says, "Well, as comedy backyard rushers, what we're trying to tell you guys is you guys are weenies." And he said, well, "It's not a joke because we're the number one contender." Said Trent, and that next week will be best friends taking on FTR for the goal on the anniversary show. Because that's the tag team match I want to see on the anniversary show. But okay, I mean, will it be a good match? Yeah, but I'm you know I feel about the best friends. I'm not into the best friends. Or yeah, they can't. I mean, they can't give away the young bucks match or anything like that. So I guess the best friends is the best option. Because uh, mm. Santana and Ortiz have nowhere to be found. So I guess the best friends are the best option at this point because uh, you know Pentagon and and Ray Phoenix is nowhere to be found. Really, all the tag teams are really like. The best friends is at the top, so I guess you know that's what we got mm-hmm. to deal with. Another video package of MJF offering his true to Chris Jericho, so he's probably be inspired by Jericho. Uh, Lars and Rich from Metallica, Gene Simmons of Kiss. Oh man, uh, Doc Callis, Shaq, and Diamond Dallas Page offer their congratulations. I missed yeah. the Shaq one. Yeah, Shaq, yeah, Shaq was like a uh, Christopher Bartholomew of Jericho. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not yet. Shaq was on there wishing him congratulations. Don Callis, you know, because he started with Don Callis uh, a long time ago. Don Callis, in, I forgot what group he was like a manager. He had like long black hair. He was in yeah. ECW probably at the time. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he was in ECW, I'm sure, when Jericho was there. And then Jericho was on there for like a couple of days, a couple of weeks, and then left. So, mm-hmm. yeah, but I'm sure that's probably his one of his first like people in ECW and he kind of told a story about how he is, is the same person from that bus ride and whatever year that was. So yeah. yeah. So then we got it's time for the first AEW dog collar match. I'm like, now? I thought that was the main event. Oh, you know, Jericho, it is Jericho's 30th anniversary. So I yeah, understood. So, but but you, you know the people he was going to against was trash. But anyway, uh, neither here or there. We get the the dog collar match between the Exalted One, Brody Lee, and then the American Nightmare, Cody. You, you, you I don't even want to do the pew, pew, pew. No. <laughs> you know, you what is Cody's I mean. problem? What is his problem? Like, what is his uh, problem? Do you have to win the title? You don't have to have the title. 
Well, when you got Bray the Hammer Valentine sitting ringside, you know who made who made the dog collar match change with Roddy Piper. You know you you you, you got to do this. He Cody is all old school, so you know how this going to go. Cody's all old, old school, but like I don't like it. Uh, he was doing good with the belt. He was kind of getting the dark order. Like they were kind of like being more legit team. They weren't being a joke no more. And he mm. was doing good, but you know, Cody said, I'm back, so I'm about to win every week and pin everybody with, with figure fours. <laughs> he only pinned one person with the figure four. Well, he tried he tried to pin uh I could have sworn he tried to do it to somebody else. Maybe it was Darby, I don't know. I well, still can't believe he pinned somebody with a figure four though. But. Uh, he uh, he he goes and D, uh Brody DTs him on the chain. You know what happens now. Cody got that blood going down. And they showed it too. Yeah. They showed them they showed them uh gushing. I mean they, they yeah. showed him gashing. I don't know if they tried to or not, but they showed him like getting the blade and like cutting his head. Yeah, you know, uh, this is bad editing right there. Uh you know, they, they go back doing some more chain stuff, and then they go to commercial and they do a good spot during the commercial where Cody gets a piece of package power driver mm-hmm. on Brody Lee off the apron through the table, rhino style. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I guess they I want like, you to watch them commercial breaks. That's basically what they're trying to say. Yeah, I, I, I guess so. Uh, and then, you know, he, he rests around the post, starts choking Brody Lee, and then he takes it off, and then Brody throws it over the classic, throw it over the top rope, and then kind of try to lynch Cody in that choking thing as well. Now, But both men are both uh, busted open. So I now, did like the spot where Cody went up for the beautiful disaster, and Brody yeah. just said, yank. And he just fell from the top. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, why would you try to do a flying move when you, uh, when you, uh, you know, connected to this person? He could easily just pull you out the air. Yeah. Uh, the first time, Broly tried to hit his his thrust kick, but slipped. So he ended up had to hit him again. But then Cody hits up with the crossroads, and then Broly kicks out. Cody's surprised. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. What we're going to have to do, type thing. He has uh-huh. to do so. Uh, Jim Ross also said, the, the, the fight is coming through Cody. And then uh, uh, Cody rests around, chain around Brody's face, hammering down with the elbows, and then hits him with a crossroads, and then pins him one, two, three. Once again, your TNT champion, the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. Uh-huh. Excuse me, Cody. The, hey, who comes out? The family, the Nightmare family. Dustin Rhodes, Brandy Rhodes, come to the ring celebrate with Cody. And Cody, with this quote, there is no feeling on earth like being able to compete and perform in front of a live crowd. I spent the time I was since I was 15 years old uh, to this moment to reach across the aisles and touch your hand. I'm sticking with you people to the very end. This is my life's work to be a pro wrestler. I want to come next week to my anniversary to defend the TNT title. And who is it going to be against? Somebody who just had a title shot last week or week before last. Yep. Orange Cassidy, Freshly Squeeze comes out and gives him the thumbs up. So now we got Orange Cassidy going up against Cody next week for the belt. So your thoughts on all this? Cody should not have won. I don't think he should have won. And, uh, you know, maybe the Dark Order come down and destroy him next week. Beat him up again. Or, That's all I got to say. Or... In my words, Christopher, my man Christopher Daniels, it could just be that the Dark Order sucks. Okay? Christopher Daniels does not have the right to talk because his stable ain't doing the best either. Okay, look, SCU is kind of old. Okay, I'm saying so. Look, when wait, wait, there's Triple X, that, that was better. Uh, Kenny Omega said that this was the tournament he was going to shake his uh, stake his claim for the AEW World Championship. Oh, uh, he said, well, Marvel Red says, you seem awfully confident. Omega said, it doesn't matter what you do at him, even if it's Hangman and a page. Omega uh, uh, reiterated that he's going he's gonna to win the thing. Uh, I think whatever tournament they're going to do is going to be them to the finals, basically, I think. Probably so. We got Big Swole taking on Serena D, the returning Serena D back in action, who was part of the Australian Society at one point. Mm-hmm. Going against Big Swole. Yep. Uh, Swole hits a uh, head with a head, but hits the, the, uh, the I forgot the, the rolling forearm thing. Dirty dancing. 
Dirty Dancing, and then beat Serena D. It's, it's a basically a throwaway match. They're just ranking a big sword to go, so she can go up against some um, Sheeta. Karo Sheeta, yeah. Yeah. At least, at least JR didn't say what he said last week. Last week, <laughs> the Britt Baker match, he was like, hey, you know, Britt's looking kind of flack. <laughs> hey, how you going to say that? <laughs> Come on, JR. Uh, we got um, Moxley sitting down at the bar. One does not simply beat Lance Archer. One survives Lance Archer. What mm-hmm. happens on October 14? Lance, maybe you'll win. Maybe I'll win. And I got a lot of regrets in my life. But laying down the ring, for you ain't one of them. It's like you said, Lance, everybody dies. So he's actually helped building up the whole threat of Lance yep. Archer. Yeah. So, yeah, because uh, last time they fought, it was they fought in New Japan. It was, oh, it was a good match. He hit like a, and Moxley. Yeah, they fought for like the US title. And he hit like a dirty D or whatever he called with Paradigm Shift from the apron to the floor through a table. So mm. it, was, it, was, it, was a, it was a good spot. So you think it's going to be a, another 30th? I mean, not thir- another like a hardcore type thing, or is it going to be a regular straight up match? I think it could be both, but a hardcore match would be so brutal and awesome because uh, Lance Archer will, can destroy Moxley and Moxley can come back. Barely, and then uh, he can, you know, they can they can have their spots here and there. Gotcha. By the way, we got like five minutes left. Okay, so I'm sorry. Uh, so I made a vet. Uh, we got 30 years in the making. Uh, so we got Luther and Serpent yeah. Taker. That's what he do. Yeah. Yeah, he and Jericho and Jake Hager. Like, who, uh, honestly, uh, MJF is always, uh, uh, oh, God, what happens? After uh, the match, MJF uh, brings out a. Oh no no! The juice effect hits. The, the, uh, well, no, the, the juice effect is 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 uh, to Luther, and then uh-huh. Jericho took the microphone and uh, to make test me. MJ MJF comes out, and then in, in the limelight, but um, he wouldn't help him celebrate. He introduces Warlow to remove the sheet from a surprise under the sheet it was a clown. The clown was holding uh-huh. another gift, uh-huh. and this time it was a gift. Uh. So it, Jericho wrapped there was a framed photo of MJF. Mm-hmm. So Jericho smashed the photo over the clown's head. And and gave the clown the <laughs> gave the clown ju- it's uh, which one? Him giving the clown juice effect or Stoko giving Santa the, the stunner? And this Judas effect looked brutal. I don't yeah. know if the dude was small, but the way he did it, he was like, bow. And I was like, dang, okay, Jericho with the quickness. You know, usually he'll do it, he'll kind of like turn slowly. This one, he was like, I'm going to just, you know, just hit, hit on that first angle. Yeah. Uh, Jericho told MJF he hates clowns and that he hates being interrupted. Jericho paused and then Jericho and MJF smiled at one another and laughed. And that's how uh, AEW goes off. So who won for the by, by the way, you know, they had the credits rolling. When they had the credits rolling, everybody that was Chris Jericho. I like yeah. that. <laughs> like camera crew of Chris Jericho. TV1, Jericho. TV6, Jericho. I kind of like that. That was cool. Uh, who won for the week? You got, in your opinion? I would say AEW won. Just you know, uh, in my opinion, I kind of, you know, I kind of like the stuff they had more. And then uh, the the Matt Jackson moment where he was looking at the TV, just like put it over the top. So I was like, yeah, okay, they got to win just for that alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's super keep the cameraman too. But AEW gets the win for me. Post any comments down below what you guys the don't want the war this week. Hit the like button if you guys enjoyed us. And stay tuned for the rest of the podcast. If you're listening to us on audio, if you've seen the video, subscribe to NC Studios for more wrestling content. And once again, this is NC a place to be trying to And not Deion Sands for prime time. All right, y'all. All right, and then uh we'll catch you on the rest of the podcast.